Hi, welcome to this module which is an introduction to digital marketing. Do any of these icons look familiar to you? Did you Google something today? Or check your Facebook maybe? Did you see that funny video which went viral yesterday? Or did you read that tweet by that famous cricketer? If you did, then you are a part of the digital world. Along with 3 billion other people, which is 40% of the world's population. Wow, that's a large number. And wherever there are a huge number of people, there is huge marketing opportunity, which is what digital marketing is all about. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand what digital marketing is, its scope, the channels, identify the need to go digital, why companies have to include digital marketing as part of their overall marketing strategy, and of course, the basic objectives of digital marketing, what it's used for. As I mentioned before, there are 3 billion people who are online today, which is close to 40% of the world's population. Who are these people? What are they doing? How are they doing it? We'll take a look at that. 62% of these people are browsing the internet through their computers or desktops. 31%, which is again a huge number, are doing so through mobile devices, through their mobile phones. The smartphone revolution has made this possible. And 7% do so through tablets. You will be surprised to know that of the total time spent on media, on electronic media, or otherwise, 54% of the time is spent on online media. Of the 54% that people spend on online media, 28% is social marketing, which is in most cases Facebook. 13% is microblogging, which again is about Twitter. And the rest of the activities are a mix of updating blogs, reading news, watching TV online, and other activities. What does this translate? When people are spending so much time on the media, there is huge opportunity for you to reach out to them during that time. And this is a result. If you will see this graph, you will notice that budgets for paid search advertising and display advertising, both of which are fundamentals of digital marketing, have been increasing over the years. This year, it is estimated that there will be a spend of $126 billion. The increase in digital spend is almost three times the increase in the total ad expenditure for marketing. When we spoke about search advertising, where is this money being spent? This again is related to where is the time being spent. This graph shows you that the Google search engine has the largest chunk, followed by Baidu and Yahoo and Bing. When people invest on search advertising, they put up ads on the search network. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is the Google search engine results page for a query office bags for women. You will notice that apart from the organic stuff that you see on the page, actually which is way down the page, the ads dominate the page. These are sponsored results and you will see a slightly yellowish orange tag indicating that they are ads. What happens if I have found a website that I want to go to and then I leave the search engine page? This is what happens. In this case, I was looking for sites about cakes and baking and I came to this website. But there's an opportunity for me to see an ad here as well. So there you go. How's this for rent in Chennai? As you saw in a previous slide, 28% of your time is spent on social media, which in most cases is predominantly Facebook. But Facebook has space for ads too. In this example, you can see ads for furniture, for childwear, and for sunglasses. Email marketing is another important branch. Have you ever got emails about loans or construction of new houses or about eBay or Amazon, any new offers? If you have, you know what I'm talking about. Why are 3 billion people online? What is this thing about digital media that is attracting everyone? Let's see that in detail. For a user, the digital media offers multiple channels and devices to do what they want to do. They have a wide range of sites, the social media to connect with, to maintain relationships. This cross-device integration, you can start on a desktop, go through a mobile and end on your tab. There's also better decision making. 
there's huge number of choices. Want to buy a bag? There are 10 sites that will offer you one. With five sites probably offering you better discounts than what you can get at the store. And of course, they're easy to buy and return. They're going to come home and deliver it to you. And if you want to return it, in most cases, they're going to pick it up as well. And of course, with wallets and other payment gateways, buying online is easier than ever before. For a marketer, there are loads of reasons. Relevance. I want to compare this aspect to traditional advertising. If you are driving down a road and you see a hoarding about, let's say, jewellery, you may or may not be wanting to buy jewellery at that point. You may not have the money for it or may not be in the mood for it. But if you are looking online and say, want to buy earrings online or want to buy jewellery online and you see ads that are relevant to you from a jewellery store, that has an extremely high degree of relevance as compared to the hoarding that you see on the road. Personalization. In a lot of cases, Google and Facebook and other sites that you use collect a lot of information about you, which is legal, but they can use this information to create a better advertising experience for you. You can even see emails where your name is highlighted. For example, I see emails that read, Hello Jasmine, would you like a loan today? Or you could see ads that could be based on your uh, previous browsing history. If you've been shopping for diapers for your kid, you could see ads that say, maybe you should buy a new diaper bag again. Cost effectiveness is a big driver for digital marketing. Traditional media over time has become super expensive. Placing an ad in the newspaper or buying a hoarding for a month is a large outlay of money. Whereas digital marketing can probably start it off with one tenth of that investment. The digital media is also an extremely measurable media. Going back to the example of the road and the hoarding, you may not have an exact count of how many people actually saw the ad on that hoarding. You will not know how many people went into your store because of that hoarding. And you will never know how many people bought that particular item because of what they saw on that particular road. Unless, of course, that was the only marketing media that you were using at that point of time. But digital media, you can track this to the very last click. You will know how many people came to your site, from where they came, what they saw on your site, and what they bought, what was the value of that purchase, and when they come back again, you can track that as well. Digital campaigns are extremely scalable campaigns. If I create a campaign for the US today, I can easily replicate it for India tomorrow. There's no permissions involved. There's no time involved. It's all done within a few clicks. How engaged can you be with a hoarding on the road? Can you talk to it? Can you change it? You can't. But you can be super engaged with an interactive ad that you see on a website. We will see examples later where you can actually make the ad work for you. You can make characters in the ads do different things by clicking your mouse around. That is engagement. What do I mean by a level playing field? If I were a small little business, obviously I will not have the monies involved to compete with a large player, a national player. But you can do so in digital marketing. You can actually decide where your ads will show to how many people they will show. And if your ads are of high quality, you might actually end up paying lesser than the bigger players in your market. And of course, there is the ability to go viral. How many of your friends ever passed down a paper cutting to you and said, wow, look at this ad? Not likely. But a lot of them must have shared a wonderful ad on their Facebook profiles. And that multiplies. That is free advertising. Let's look at the objectives of digital marketing. Driving sales and leads. This is direct response marketing, where your campaigns will get people to buy something from your website. In some cases, they may not want to buy something, but probably convert to a lead, where they will sign up for a, a quote or sign up for a subscription. If you're a small brand that nobody knows about, or if you're a huge brand but introducing a new product, a new addition to your product line, and you want to increase brand awareness, digital marketing is the answer. For businesses that are not really selling a product and don't need sales or leads, or not advertising a product, but just want people to come to their site, could be a new site, could be a blog about cooking, could be something about the environment that you want to talk about, 
Basically, you're driving people to your site. And this can be done through digital marketing. User behavior is an important factor in advertising. There is a difference between how it is treated in traditional media and digital media. Let's look at a few factors that matter in digital marketing. The first page of results. There's a funny quote that I read the other day that the best place to bury somebody is on the second page of results because they're never going to be found. If you are not on the first page of a search engine's results, nobody is ever going to click in and see your ads. So it's important to be in the midst of action, which is on the first page. The first fold is that part of the website that you see without scrolling down. Again, most people are not involved enough to scroll down. And therefore, if you want your message to be heard, it's important to be in the first fold. We need a right mix of text and images. Too much text will make it look like a newspaper, too bookish. Too much images will look like clutter. In fact, there's a term called banner blindness where the brain is attuned to tuning out stuff which looks like too much of ads. So you need to have the right mix of text and images. Clarity of content. Somebody who comes to your website needs to understand what your website is all about. He shouldn't have to be clicking through five or six links to get a gist of what your site is about. It needs to be there, upfront, clear and easy to understand. A call to action is a signal to the user about what he has to do. What do you want people to do when they come to your site? Do you want them to buy something? Do you want them to sign up somewhere? Do you want them to give them your email ID? What do you want them to do? Unless you tell them clearly, they're not going to be able to understand. Quick and easy navigation is a very important fact. Have you ever been to websites where you try hitting the back button and you come back out of the site? If you have, that's terrible, isn't it? A user needs to understand how he can move from one page on the site to another. A prominent back button, a home button, all this will help. Security. Security is a major concern because there's lots of commercial transactions happening on the web. You put in your credit card details, you don't want to be fished, but you don't want to end up spending a lot of money unintentionally. So security is important. Invest resources in creating a secure atmosphere for your users. Responsiveness. In this world of social media, where people expect you to talk back to them, brands have a very important responsibility of responding back to the user. If somebody posts on a brand's page that I didn't get this product or it was bad, it becomes important for the brand to respond back and say, we are sorry, we will look into it. If you don't, that leaves a very bitter taste in the user's mouth. So watch out for responsiveness. That brings us to the end of this module. Let's take a look at what we learned. We learned that exponential growth on the digital highway or the digital world is a huge opportunity for marketers. Users can be reached in various channels, search, display, social media, email marketing, and more. The benefits of digital marketing are numerous. A few important ones are relevance, measurability, and scalability. The main objectives of digital marketing are driving sales and leads, clicks to your site, or increasing brand awareness. And finally, we learned about how user behavior in the digital world is different from the traditional uh, world and what this sets expectations for, what factors are important when you look at a digital marketing campaign. Thank you.